we were having a quick chat earlier about the the crazy rain that ha sometimes happens in Gold Coast, and I wanted to say, hey, thanks, Dale, for taking the time to chat with us on Business Spotlight. Pleasure. It's great to be here. Yeah, thank you. So, um, probably get into uh, a little bit of your your style as a business owner or as an entrepreneur and uh, things along those lines. So, um, how long have you been in this industry? 34 years. Hey. It's a long time. I was called an industry veteran uh, a couple of years ago at a function. And I went, I'm not an industry veteran. And the person <laughs> went, how long have you been in the industry? I said, that was 32 years. And they went, what makes that you not a veteran? I'm, I hadn't thought about that. You just sort of go along and day after day. And uh, what I will say is probably where I differ from a lot of people, Bill, is people say, oh, I, I fell into the industry. Uh, mm. I didn't. Mm. I, I actually didn't. I'm doing what I wanted to do and what I'd set my heart on doing when I was about 12 or 13 years old. Wow. That's awesome. That's very cool. Um, what about it appealed to you even back then compared to now? Uh, the difference you can make to people's lives on a daily basis. Um, I think everybody in all jobs can do that, even though some people don't don't see that they can or don't feel that they can. They really can. Mm -hmm. But this job, this job in this industry, per se, not just even insurance breaking, the insurance industry, when everything goes, at it, when everything happens at its worst, we put the world back together. Mm -hmm. We we really do. We're the security that underpins everything economic economic growth financial markets financial systems insurance is the thing that underpins it all so we've got this just unique opportunity to make a day-to-day -day difference in people's lives yeah and that uh, appealed to me a great deal i could see that it, i would also it's coming to me as you're saying it it's almost like a good insurance ecosystem boisters or uh, it gives provides like a, a nice platform for risk taking in an economy in general. Most and, definitely, um, with the stabil yeah. with the stability, most definitely. Yeah, and in many ways, if you think about it, they they how most uh, and I talked to a lot of other entrepreneurs here who do a lot of behind the scenes uh, software packages for big industry and whatnot. And and when it's not when it is working, nobody really notices it. Uh, Correct. They don't. They don't. They don't really. They don't fall in love with it. It's almost not in their consciousness until the storm hits, until something yes. happens, and then you're the first person they call. And uh, yeah, so yeah, when things break, they call the utility to fix it. Yes. <laughs> it's the same thing with insurance. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We have to be the best there is when the worst happens. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a good way of putting it. I love it. Um, so as what would you say is your is the number one lesson you learned along the way? I mean, 34 years or so is quite a bit. So what's your number one uh, biggest learning in business or in life from that? Every single person you come across has something to teach you if mm. you're listening. So we need to listen, not hear, listen. They're not the same thing. You yeah. hear with your ears yeah. and you listen with your mind. And everyone that you come across in life has something to teach you. and Sometimes we need to just get taught. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Almost, almost always we need to get taught something, even if it's just be patient with relearning something you already know. You know, yeah. absolutely. I like it. Um, uh, there, are, there are a couple of things that that I'm I'm curious about in terms of um, you have probably helped others in a thirty odd year old. Uh, Yes, career. You probably have mentored others. What sort of advice would you give somebody sort of entering into the insurance field now? Listen lots. Be patient. People mm -hmm. totally overestimate what they can achieve in 12 months and totally underestimate what they can achieve in three years. And just yeah. be patient. And when you're in doubt, just move forward. When you are not sure, just move forward and back yourself. Yeah. I like it. So so that's very similar to how what I say as a coach, to be honest. Yeah, it's very, very similar language. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Um, and, so, and if you got it, if you got if you got instincts telling you something, follow it. It's telling you something for a reason. OK. Yeah. 
to it to it to a young person yeah yeah it could be that it's telling you something because it doesn't fit your overall set of ethics and values or it's telling you something because your subconscious mind is telling you something that this is not right for you this is not right place right time the only time i've really made mistakes in my life is when i've actually not followed what my instincts were telling me inevitably when i followed my instincts it was successful right on yeah um so that's a that's a good lesson to for somebody to hear uh young in their life yeah you need to yes you need to temper that i guess with that whole other thing that you just mentioned is be ready to learn some stuff because sometimes a young person doesn't understand understand fundamentals as well you know what i mean and they're making they're making their decision and their gut's telling them something from a point of view of not understanding those fundamentals but then you once you understand or get a, a hold of those fundamentals then your your instincts actually should shift hopefully <laughs> you know correct yeah find yeah. find people find people and they don't even have to be in your industry they can be people in life so find people that you think of, that you have a lot of admiration for that you are very comfortable with the way that they do things and try and communicate with them and follow them. You, that's how you develop very, very good mentors. As you said, I've been lucky. I, I've had excellent mentors. They're still excellent mentors for me now. I mentor a number of other people as well. Uh, your, mem- your mentors are what will take you from being someone a- a- and they will take you to being everything that you're capable of. Yeah, and they'll take you to the place where you are. you become everything that you can become. I don't think without a good mentor, people get there. There are so many people that never quite attain the things that they were capable of. They never quite meet their, um, their they never reach what was possible for them. They never reach their mm-hmm. potential, sorry, is what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. And I think the difference between that and people achieving what they're capable of and meeting their goals and attaining the things they want to attain and being the person they want to be is your mentors. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. And it, if I, I've, I've had some businesses that were in uh, heavily in, involved with interfacing with several uh, types of um, insurance companies, and to a great extent, the the ones that seem to have the ha- not, I would say just even keeled customers were the ones where they were pouring information into. They were giving them audits and double checking some stuff and yes. really actively holding their hand to. To get them to a point where number one just good decisions are being made any decision is being made number two is they're also informed enough to make a decent decision uh and and it it stops yeah it would it's a that's been my people who are more panicked are usually the type of people who have insurance companies that sort of don't pay attention to their actual needs and and walk them through down that process just like mentors they are essentially mentors but in a in a in a silo of uh, uh, possibilities, yeah, I like it. I like that. Um, as a coach, I enjoy that a lot. So, what would your what would you say is your biggest issue you ever had to overcome, either as you know, in a business that you owned, had to overcome, or yourself? Uh, fear factor, the leap of mm. faith, taking that leap of faith, backing your own ability, listening to your instinct, and taking that leap of faith and doing something when other people are telling you not to. But you know it's right, and it feels right to you. So that little fear factor, that leap of faith, is such a big thing for a lot of people. Um, We we, we never explored the world by standing on the same cliff we're on now. So it's to take that leap of faith and to back your ability and your judgment. Yeah, cool. And um, that also includes um, engaging with those people who could be your guide, I would say. Engaging with people. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just sort of. There's so many people, they oh, oh, and they get there and they they talk themselves out of something. And Mm. I just went through the process with a very, very dear mentor of mine not long ago who sort of came to the end of their lifespan and said, when you get to the stage I'm at now, Dale, you spend more time worrying about the things you didn't do rather than the things you did do. The things I did do, I did. I'm now looking back. And, and and I'm neglectful of the things that I didn't do. I should have done them. So he said to me, so if you're thinking about doing something, go and do it because your instinct's telling you you should and you probably should. Yeah. So, yeah, don't don't spend too much time. And we spend so much time as society worrying about the things we didn't do and the mistakes that we made. And it's like, well, without the mistakes that we made, we're not becoming the person we're becoming. 
So mm. forgive yourself for that. You're allowed to make mistakes. We're supposed to. But take that leap of faith. Mm. Nobody got I mean, any nobody ever did anything without it. Have you um is there someone in particular who has done that uh that sort of resonates in your head that maybe the public would know? Or is there anybody who you so sort of not necessarily look up to, but incorporate their personality traits as a as a Yeah, I I, I I read and study a lot uh Bob Proctor and Tony Robbins. I really yeah, like Bob Napoleon Proctor, yeah. Hill as yes. well. A lot, a lot of his teachings. Yes. They as my cat my camera's gone off. Now I'm back. They talk about those things a lot. And I started re his teachings about 25 years ago, and it really opened up a whole different mindset for me and a different way of thinking and of doing things. And I found the it's funny. Bill, I found the more I read, the more courageous I became. Mm. I got more confident. Uh, mm. And these people are quite free to tell their stories and say, hey, not everything's going to work. It's not supposed to. Mm. Mm. Um, nobody ever learned anything by doing all day what they already knew how to do. Right. Yeah, good point. And that had a huge impact on me when I when I heard that. I went, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. hundred percent. And he's like, yeah. go out and learn a whole lot of new stuff and go and do a whole lot of stuff you don't know how to do. Right. And that's been a thing for you now. Yeah. You know, when, while, you know, yeah. when the pain's at its greatest, you're learning the most. <laughs> and when you're the most fearful, it's the greatest opportunity for learning. So I've always tried yeah. to encompass that. Yeah. And business, uh, you know, certainly uh, does not have any shortage of uh, pain <laughs> sometimes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. And it comes yeah. in all different so, forms yeah. and shapes yeah. and, yeah. you know. It sure does. Yeah, that's great. So are there. COVID are, just being the latest. Yeah. Well, hey, that's a good question. What was, how did it, I know that it was, we're talking about different organization, an earlier organization, but how did it, how did it affect uh, your situation there business-wise, the whole business as a whole back then? So ours was extraordinary. So we had about 38% of our business that suddenly became the other side of a concrete wall mm -hmm. that you needed a, a pass to go and visit. We, we, we have a very large book of business in northern New South Wales. Mm -hmm. So my staff were then wasting hours of time sitting in border checkpoints to have their border pass right. checked. Yeah, operational um, costs started to rise. Productivity Absolutely. So time is absolutely yeah. time's money, right? So, mm -hmm. so that that became a real concern. Unfortunately, a lot of our clients didn't survive COVID. Uh, a, a number didn't. It just became in too much for them, along with all the other financial constraints that were going on well before COVID as well. Uh, staff, keeping staff calm, focused, clear in this great period of uncertainty where if you watch social media and you watch the news, everything was a negative and it was a negative on a negative on a negative day after day after day after day. And if you weren't, care if you weren't careful, that really started to accept to uh, affect people's psyches and their abilities. So it was yeah. making sure that everybody had a purpose, had a clear goal for the day, understood yeah. why they were making a difference. And I said to our staff, I said, if we do nothing more with some of our clients and make sure that we are the most positive interaction they have today, then we've done our job. Mm -hmm. And I set them all that goal and that task as well. So yeah. it was just another thing to overcome. The business learned a whole lot from it. Mm -hmm. um, we grew as people. We grew as a business. We're smarter. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, it was just another it was just another mountain we overcame. Yeah, I, I always come to agree. And I love your point of view. As I was going to ask the next question in my head was what are the one or two big actions you took? So you that you already answered them, and um, my my business. I have a uh, another business that I co-own with a an old client who asked me to stay on permanently. So I'm a co-founder of that yep. business, and it's an office cleaning business. And when no one needs to go to oh, the wow. office, do yeah. you need any cleaning, right? So we had about a, a similar 38 percent jump, and we made major shifts. And it the thing you said was exactly how we. That was like the first chapter. We created a for free. Actually, Coach created this um, how to survive this thing type of manual. We just got it out there. And step one is get out of fetal mental mental fetal position. Get out of that. 
And if you're expecting to have other people have courage enough to engage with you, don't. You have to be the one who gives them that courage in the first place right. to even think differently yeah, about their business. You know, and um, and so so it was an opportunity to strengthen your. I don't. I don't want to say it's a mindset. It's just a decision to get on with it instead of not get on with it. It really was that simple. So you step back. Yeah, we made know. a decision. It's a bit. We made yeah. a decision not to be a victim. Right. Bingo, we weren't. Bingo, we yeah. weren't participating. Right. Ownership, accountability, responsibility type stuff. Yeah. So I said uh, to the huge, team here, huge. we're not going to participate in this. I can't affect yeah. what's going on, but we can affect what happens in here. Yeah. And we can affect what happens in here. So the negativity, we're not going to participate. Not saying right. it's not real and it's not. And it, sure, it is. We all know yeah. that. Right. But we don't but have to participate in it and make it worse than it is. We are choosing every step of our path every, and we will not stop. Absolutely. That type of thing. Yeah. So our, our we had a very similar view. You, you ended up probably, I don't know what happened was we lost that 38%. We replaced it with other things. Then we got that 38% back after COVID. So our, our business boomed. You know what I mean? Because we were yeah, just. We've, we've had the same. Uh, yeah, experience. agile. Yeah, great. That's awesome. Agility is super important. We've had the same experience. And the, yeah. and the new word from, from COVID, and it's an overused word, but it's true, is pivot. Yeah, this is yeah. Pivot, pivot was the real. That's right. Pivot, pivot was, was the word. word. It was the 21, <laughs> yeah. 2021 word. Pivot, pivot, and every everyone business a, needed to be able to pivot. Yeah, everyone was a walking pivot chart. <laughs> so that's good. That's awesome. So, uh, what do you think? Um, is there a specific person you think of other than Tony Robbins or Bob Proctor when you think of success in general, especially in your industry? Anyone in your industry who you think of as successful that pops into your head? Oh, look. Look, we've got a few. I look back at sort of, you know, a retired senior executive from Aon, Jeff Smith, who one mm. of the finest insurance mm. brokers there's ever been. Mm. Stephen Ball, who mm. the Broker of the Year Award is now named after. And really? just, just an immense character who achieved so much through his career. But the two gentlemen, two of the things that they, that, that I, they should be the proudest of that I think are their greatest achievements. Mm -hmm. Uh, the caliber and quality of the people that they grew behind them. Oh, sure, sure. And they're, I think they've left just they've left just the most magnificent legacy behind. Yeah, it's good to hear. It's, it's not easy to do, uh, but I, it's good I, to hear. Yeah, it's not easy to do. It's really mm. not easy to do. It, it's very difficult to do. Mm. And those they're there two that jump out at me straight away, and they left such a magnificent legacy behind them. And they they've mentored a lot of people who really picked up their baton and have moved it forward in a teaching and I'm trying to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I really admire people that are able to leave a legacy behind. Okay. Because well, you speaking, can't leave a legacy behind unless you, you, you're so gen and that you're so giving of your time and your generosity and the, the, yeah. there's anyone that's had the ability to be able to build a legacy. It's just an amazing thing to do. I like to think a good, well, I like to think a worthwhile legacy to build is, is some thing, some story, some way of approach, some specific tools, challenges, whatever, uh, that help other people make a better future. So the, the reason why even you have a good legacy. Yeah. Yeah. E Bill, even if it's thought processes and good habits. Yeah. 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 It doesn't good, have to be good a habits patent. repetition. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, good habits repetition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so true. I think um, this has been a very refreshing chat. I think we're going to probably wrap up, but I'll, I'll ask one, one final question. Yeah, is, sure. um, uh, what do you say you've learned about yourself in particular along your journey? Yeah, uh, um, I'm capable of more than I ever thought I was when I was younger. Um, I'm able to deal with adversity much better than ever than I ever thought I was capable of. And people in general are capable of more than they ever dreamed they are. But they allow people to put limits upon them when really the only uh, people really are limitless. We we really are capable of so much more than we think we are capable of. And it's just such a shame that it takes just this great catastrophe or some great some awful thing to happen mm. for all these inherent strengths and abilities that come out of people why do we wait for then unfortunately sometimes for them to come out we're mm. capable of so much more than we think and we prove that whenever and i'm being in the insurance industry you see it all the time whenever there's a catastrophe or 
something happens around the world or inherently people are able to do the most amazing things far more than they ever dreamed mm. but sometimes it's the only time it ever comes out and i i just wish we could find a more, a more proactive way to unlock those abilities from within ourselves yeah. and i'm working on that within me that's cool that's awesome i like to say that coaching tries to unlock a lot of that that's our job in life is yes you know the various people that do this professionally um but again we can't we can only bring the horse to the water that person has to really Correct. want it right so um you know what was the what was the phrase it reminds me of a uh of a uh gentleman who used to teach um i would i want to call it motivational type speaking back in the day when that was a real thing you know what i mean like uh and he says he said that his mom used to ask him or his grandfather or somebody used to ask him how's you want to if you got a good want to today absolutely you know, if you don't have a good want to, you just stay in bed. You're not doing anyone any good. So get your want. Make sure your want to is nice and strong, you know, at all times. Proctor. And, uh, Proctor yeah. off, Bob Proctor often says, it's amazing what we're capable of when we don't have a choice. Mm. Yeah, sure. Good, yeah. And, and, that. I, and that resonated with me. If, if you had no choice but to succeed at doing something, you find mm. ways where you, you could do it because you don't have a choice. Yeah, it's a very Shackleton story esque. I don't know if you've ever heard of Shackleton. Very much so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very much awesome. so. Yeah. Well, on that on that note, I'll say uh, let's hope everyone you know learns a little bit of Shackleton in their careers. And thank you so much, Dale, um, for awesome. for taking the time. I mean, good luck with BMS Group and all that uh, emerging future that you have with them. And that's awesome. So thanks again, Dale. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bill.